welcoming everyone to Artworks as we start another week of uh, shows uh, of artists during this time where we can't be out at real live art shows. We'll do them on social media and Facebook. We are glad you're able to join us today. Hold on a second. Continue. Um, so uh, we are sponsored by Dane by Local and Madison Essentials Magazine. Thank you for helping us to promote uh, the art show again this week. We appreciate that um, if you're in the Madison area. Um, we have Jason joining us once again from Chicago. Uh, Jane and Julie are from the greater Madison area. Julie, you're actually Mount Horb, is that correct? Yeah, kind of between Mount Horeb and New Glarus, out in the country. You're out in the country. See a country girl. Yep. Well, great. I was going to go to New Glarus Brewery uh, a couple weeks ago with a couple there. friends oh. until this all started and that plan got canceled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Julie, why don't we start with you today, if that's all right? We didn't all right. Talk where we're going to go in, but we'll start with you. Um, and um, how long have you been doing? Um, art shows? Probably about eight years now. Whoops. So it's you, been about eight years. Yeah, um, new, two different mediums that you do, both uh, photography and jewelry. Yep. Which, which one did you start with? Both. Um, I'm a graphic designer by training. And so part of that, I had to take some, um, some photography classes when I was actually doing my, my graphic design work. Um, but even before that, I traveled with a camera. I had a little um, pocket camera that I got that took film and traveled around with that for a while. Um, funny story, actually I was traveling in Italy and I was sleeping on a train and someone rifled through our luggage and it was in my carry-on pack on a shelf up above me. And because I was carrying it in an old sweat sock, they stole my travel mug and left my camera behind. <laughs> so that was kind of when I got hooked and I was just doing a lot of point and shoot then. And then I got back and went to school for graphic design and um, needed to start working with uh, like a, a standard film camera um, that's more of a, an SLR. And then I transitioned to digital eventually. So cool. Cool. That's kinda, it's kind of how I got started. And um, just, I photograph a, variety of medium I kind of I like to say I photograph the life around me um you know so it's a it's obviously a variety I do a lot of close-up work but I do some landscape work um you know last night I was out on the road chasing the sunset because I looked out my window and it looked like a nice sunset so you know if I'm out and about I try to take my camera with me just so I can get different different visions sure yeah. sure well, that's great that's great and as far as art shows are concerned when we are doing shows um, how, what kind of a uh, radius do you cover as far as uh, how far do you travel for shows? I do a lot in and around the Madison area. Um, you know, I do a lot of the, the rural shows. Actually, um, I'm supposed to be at a show right now this weekend. It was the first time I was doing this show in Milwaukee um, at the Mitchell Domes. I actually grew up in Milwaukee, so I occasionally go to Milwaukee for shows, but otherwise, So I do a lot in the Dane County area normally, um, you know, in and about this area. My, my studio was supposed to be open the beginning of June. It would have been the um, ninth year, I think, that I had it open. Um, that was the very first show I did was I had my, my studio open. Um, unfortunately, we just found out that was canceled. So that's always a great time where you get to drive around the Mount Horeb area, visit artists' um, studios, that kind of fun stuff. Um, we all do demonstrations of our work so you can see how people work, where they work, how they make their work. Um, don't do a lot of photography demonstrations there, but since I do jewelry as well, I have a workbench down there that people come in and they can see me, um, you know, working on my jewelry. Just to give you an example of what I do a lot of, I do a lot of leaves. And so they kind of look like this. And these are all about $35. They're all a bunch of different leaves, not very big. Um, I do a variety of those. They start out as a flat sheet of metal that I heat and then I fold it and then I hammer in the seams and then I hammer in the fold. 
and then I have to heat it again to unfold it. And then I put in like the texture and stuff around the edges to get those. And I do a variety of different leaves. Um, not Once I make the leaves, I bring them up here and I, I work with them. And so I get some leaves and then I add, um, you can see kind of they, they're sparkling here in the, in the light, um, check glass beads that I add. Sometimes I just add a few in, sometimes I add an entire chain. And I make all the chains myself. So they're all done um, one bead at a time. I put them on, a, on some, some, I want to say string. I put them on wire and then I hook them and loop them on each side. Um, another leaf, sorry, another leaf that I do is, is a bigger leaf. And so this is like two leaves on one chain or a single leaf, just simply hang on a chain or with a giant bead. And these you can see are a little bit bigger. Um, and these are really long. These ones here that I'm showing you are really long necklaces. So these are, the other necklaces, the shorter ones I'm showing you, hang about like the one I have on my neck. So they're 18 to 19 inches. These are about um, 34, 35 inches sometimes. Um, just a single leaf runs for 45. Double leaves are 75. And then a single leaf with like a, a, a pairing of stones is um, 55. So that's sort of an example of what I do for my jewelry. I do do a variety of other jewelry, um, different folds. This is a more complex fold where it's been heated. When I was telling you earlier, I heat things um, and then I have to heat them. So when I'm, I'm heating them to soften the metal and then as you hammer them, you work hard in the metal. So when I hammer in this crease here, I harden up the metal again and I have to heat it in order to open it back up. So I obviously had to heat it for this seam and then heat it for this seam and, and each of these other seams. This one was heated multiple times just because the metal will get brittle as you're hammering it and work hardening it. Um, it gets kind of brittle and it needs to be heated again until you completely um, create this circle. Something like this piece here can take about an hour for me to do um, and take about five heatings to get it into a complete circle. And these guys bouncing on top is just an example of like a cross heated two folds pair of earrings. So I do a variety of different earrings with those as well. So, I mean, I kind of started doing the jewelry because it was fun. I was hooked. I took a metalworking class. I was kind of hooked. It was fun. I liked wearing them. And then one day I looked up and went, I can't wear all this stuff. So I started basically sharing it with the rest of the world because, you know, I only have one neck. I can only wear so many pieces at a time. You can layer these. I mean, you can, I often will wear one of the really long ones with a leaf on it and then wear a short one with a leaf on it. Um, or sometimes one with a different fold. So you can pair them, but still, you know, maximum two or three pieces of jewelry at once on my neck might be, a, might be a lot depending on what I'm wearing. So yeah, it just came to that a realization that uh, if I wanted to keep making these, I had to do something, you know, um, family and friend do sometimes get them as gifts, uh, but yeah, and sometimes my family actually buys them, so they're they're great at supporting me that way too. So that's my jewelry, and like I was telling you earlier, my photography is kind of sharing the world around me. You can see behind me some examples. Um, these are all printed on metal. I actually have an entire show that's hanging now that um, the only person who's it was up for two weeks before we shut down. And it's hanging in his gallery, and I don't think he's been in. I don't think he's been into his shop, but otherwise, just hanging there by itself, enjoying itself. Um, but I can give you a sample of a little bit of my um, my work if you'd like to see that. Sure. And let me see if I can share screen into that. There we go. See if I can. All right, that should be good. Um, and just to give you a little example of my of my work, like I said, it's a lot of close up. These are past flowers. Um, they just finished blooming. They're one of the first flowers to come up in the prairie. I should mention that I live um, since I'm in the country. I also have a two acre restored prairie. Um, we've been working on that for about uh, maybe 20 years, um, so it's coming along nicely. And we also live next to um, what's now a DNR natural area. And these are actually growing both, we found a bunch of these on our, our prairie remnant, and we, they're also growing next door on a prairie remnant. And so these are basically in the crocus family and first ones to come up in the summer or spring, so I always, I'm always watching for them. 
that's another vision of them just after like a rain with the with the beaded up um, raindrops on them. I like to look, like I said, close up, look at nature. Nature is everywhere around you. This is just uh, tree trunks right near my house, right outside my door. If you go look at your tree trunks, I find it fascinating, all the different bark you can see and the different patterns. And I love the mosaic feel of all the moss and the lichens on top of all the bark. Um, just noticing the everyday. This is just raindrops on a water feature behind Union South. I went out to, I was on campus and I went out to photograph the tulips and ended up just capturing this. And I kind of just love the sort of abstract and calming feel of this piece. Um, mushrooms are always a lot of fun to, to photograph. Two totally different subjects here. Um, the one you're seeing is obviously morel grows wild. Um, we pick him and eat him. He posed nicely and then I ate him for breakfast. Um, not today. I haven't seen them yet this year. And then the other one is just a mushroom that I started growing on, um, started growing on my counter. And because I'm a photographer, I needed to take pictures of it. And I just love like the repetitive and the gills and that kind of thing. This is another prairie plant, native prairie plant. It's called prairie smoke. It's supposed to look like smoke going along the grass. And it's really deceptive because these flower heads are about an inch tall. So that just tells you when I'm photographing these, I have to like lay on my stomach down in the grass and, and really get in there to get a, a good close up of them. Another just sort of came across this in my mother-in-law's garden, um, just two daffodils and they were kind of just bent over. It had rained recently. So maybe they were just sort of waterlogged and kind of bent over the dark ground. And so I was able to kind of capture this and have those pop out the way the light was hitting them. Another um, fun native plant is just the, the pasture rose. And we have several of these in our And so um, just waiting for those to come up again this year. And I call this one Twin Beauties. Um, love to go out to the Arboretum and check out all the magnolias. I heard they're just starting to bloom. Um, but because of all of the um, all of the restrictions this year, it's usually pretty crowded. I may just stay home and have to forego and just enjoy what I've actually seen in the past. Another one of the magnolias up close. Sometimes um, it's just about, my vision is just about seeing, like I said, what's common around you. This week, um, I came back with my dog one day and the sun was just hitting all the dew drops and everything just right. And so that was kind of a, a fun capture. And then this one here is a large prairie leaf. It's called a prairie dock leaf. They get to be several feet um, tall. Um, but they stay really close to the ground and then they send up this nice um, flowering stalk that can be anywhere from six to ten feet tall and you can see it's just starting to come in with a new leaf and the stalk is starting to go up there but i love the way that it was silhouetted in the light here and i call this one lattice work i call the grass overlooked because it's just such a common thing we just we all overlook our lawns and sometimes they're actually very interesting um, Love to sneak out and catch water droplets and especially the metal prints that I do really make the water droplets and everything pop. Um, I don't like to spray things. So this was actually outside my door and just ran out and caught it during a, a rainstorm. Um, you know, kind of trying to protect myself and my gear, but just went out and took a bunch of photos in the rain. Um, just a series of different photos that I've taken. This is uh, just apple blossoms in the spring with the dew on them. This is actually a tulip from a different perspective. If you've ever looked down, most of us are used to seeing the tulips straight up, but this is actually looking down once it's starting to open all the way. And then the big one is just a peony. Um, I have a great fr a friend who's a great gardener and I was over visiting her garden and, and captured this beautiful peony photo. Didn't even see the bug, but I love it. I think it adds to it that there's this little world inside the world kind of thing. These were caught after a rainstorm. When I was visiting, visiting a garden center, I had to go back to the car and pick up my, um, my camera just to, to capture these because it was so amazing. Um, but they were just set, single blooms set in the ground and the ground was kind of dark behind them. So that was how I was able to, I might've burned in a little bit of this here, but otherwise I tend to leave my photos kind of unadulterated. I call this one surprise. Um, it was really kind of an unexpected surprise. Um, growing in my basement in February and I just gotten a new macro lens so I went down and played with my macro lens and and just got some fun close-ups of that. 
she me um i wanted to get a dragonfly i've been wanting to get dragonflies but i'm kind of like a little kid chasing a puppy you know little kid always sees the puppy wants to pet the puppy the puppy runs away a lot of insects do that for me um i get really enthusiastic and i try to run up to them and get that quick photo before they fly away um this one i just sort of mustered a lot of patience and wandered up to set up my tripod got in really really close he slowly moved the tripod closer and closer and he was nice enough to pose for me I, I say he, it could have been a she. I don't actually know how to sex dragonflies. Um, but it posed very nice for me. And I call this one um, Strike a Pose. Um, it was there for about 45 minutes. It flew up and landed in a couple different positions while I was um, photographing. And then I started to notice it looked around at me and it looked around at the world. And I started trying to capture this one. And I call this one Smile because it makes me smile whenever I look at it. And it looks like it's smiling at the camera. Um, you know, always a, a favorite of myself and other people are the sunflowers. So this was taken at Pope's, um, was it Pope's Field or Pope's Farm a few years back. And just another close up of the, of the photograph. And this one I just kind of call like patterns in nature because I love how it's got the repetitive patterns in here kind of over and over again. And another close up, um, I love to, to go after things like bees and you can see all the pollen on this bee and the nice bees, um, the, the pollen sacs that are full. And so I like to get close up on bees and bees don't, aren't as, quite as skittish. They don't tend to fly around, away as much. Um, this is called bursting forth and it's basically um, just as it, as it kind of speaks to the, the name of the milkweed as the seeds kind of burst forth out of the pods. Um, and I like to go get those every fall. And this one here was another achievement because I've got this nice butterfly by sneaking up from below. Someone tipped me off that they tend to look above and they're always looking for predators above them. So obviously um, in a sunflower field, the flowers are way above, so it's easier to crouch down and kind of crawl up to them. And then another pollinator, um, you know, bee just having a good time covered in pollen, another monarch. And then sometimes it's just fun to look intensely at these flowers and just look at all the different layers and the way they're kind of still folded in on themselves. Sometimes it's about capturing things or looking at things in different seasons. This one was taken probably mid-August, September when it was flowering. And then this was taken um, again in the fall with the seed heads, that kind of thing on it. And finally came across this um, out on a hike and just sort of thought it was sort of fun and meditative. I love the, the different colors of the stones and then juxtaposed against all the green of nature. So that's it. And um, at the end of this, I will be posting my information to the Facebook page so that um, people can actually um, visit the site and um, check things out. And you can always go to my social media and just enjoy these for free. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate that. Uh, Julie's also been hard behind the scenes, working hard behind the scenes in putting together uh, all the uh, web pages for this uh, show and uh, the videos as well and posted on YouTube. So thank you for doing all that for us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Jason is next. Jason is from Chicago. Um, and Jason, uh, you have to unmute yourself there. Um, can you um, tell us how long you've been doing art shows? Sure. Uh, what year is it? 2020. Uh, <laughs> see, so I think so. I started doing art shows in 2014. Uh, so about about six, going on seven years now. Uh, and you know, like all artists, my art has cha changed throughout the years constantly. I started off uh, primarily doing printmaking. Uh, and then, you know, by taking more classes and then exploration, my art grew uh, into more graphic design and then graphic design-based photography. Uh, so while, you know, the beautiful thing about art is that everyone, you see a lot of similarities of different artists' work, but everyone goes about it from a different perspective. So... Uh, I also have a lot of photographs, macro photographs from nature, but as you'll see, they're very different from uh, from the artist before me work. 
So I think that'll be cool to, to show you uh, both the similarities uh, and the differences, which I think make us unique. So let me uh, screen share so you can start looking at my work. Feel free to ask me any other questions as we go along, Colin. Sure, sure. sure. So I am going to start with some of my more, can you all see my screen? I think yep. so. Great. So I'm going to start with some of my more abstract work and that, then move, move to some of my more realistic work. So, you know, in general, I'll take photographs of nature and then try to look at them it, from a different perspective uh, that you wouldn't normally look, look at. So this is, uh, I'm starting off with one of my favorite pieces. Uh, so the, this series of fruits and vegetables, I went to the grocery store uh, and bought a, basically a, you know, a couple of every fruit and vegetable I could find, put, out, put them out on my kitchen table, uh, cut them in half. Some of them I uh, you know, pho photographed uh, the whole piece. Um, and then did different things to edit them to make make them kind of unique. So most of my uh, cropped out the background to make them black and then posterized them to make them more ab abstract. And this one, I you know, put together a couple different versions with uh, different color combinations. So very bl uh, bright and playful. So you can, so I've got this version with four different strawberries and then uh, you can also uh, uh, have I'll p print pieces with each individual strawberry. So here's a blue one with purple leaves. You know, very uh, surreal, if you will. And then another fan favorite, the pink one with kind of goldish yellow, it's yellowish leaves. And then going along with the fruit and vegetable series. Uh, some that are a little bit more realistic, true to their natural colors, but still up up close and you know, very abstract. Here you see a kiwi, and you know it seems very flat, but you could still kind of feel the edges of the kiwi. It's really really cool like that. Moving on, got a mushroom, uh, a big portobello mushroom, uh, which I you know put on the table and then pho photographed, you know, the bottom of it. So you can really feel the texture uh, all throughout this area. Up next, we've got a tomato that I sliced in half with that, you know, bright red uh, to really bring out, you know, different colors you might have in your kitchen. So all of these I'll often sell, sell in groups of three or four. Uh, and they go really well together uh, and you know you can hang them in uh, different um, you know in a row uh, in a column in a square uh, and just kind of mix and match your favorites uh, to bring out different colors in your lip in your kitchen or dining room so that's it for now for my fruits and vegetables series again I've got many more of those on my website so moving on to a few that are a little bit more realistic, um, a different series in nature, a lot of flowers, which I also love to photograph. So here are some cherry blossom trees, which are you know, prominent uh, out east in DC and Philadelphia. Uh, that's where this one was, was taken. Uh, so you see the images as you get up close and then when they're printed bigger, become more and more abstract while you can still recognize the, uh, what the original image is itself. And here's one from that same series, a little bit closer up. Another cherry blossom. And then this next one was a lily. This one was a lot, a lot of fun. I you know, really made, you know, brought out some of the pinks, made, made, the, made those brighter, a little pinker. And in, do, in doing so, change some of the, the background co colors so you get some really, really interesting greens and blues over, over here in the background. Up next, we've got a purple poppy. Again, you can almost you know, feel the texture of that leaf. Mm 
moving on to some of my more recent uh, flower photos that are, you know, uh, have more and more, more detail and depth. Uh, this is a really cool sun, sunflower. And again, you see the different takes on these. Um, mine is very diff different than her sun, sun, sunflower because I'm coming at it from more of a, a graphic design perspective. And that's, that's what makes all, all artists really creative and unique in their, in their individual way. Up next, I've got a couple really cool dahlias. I remember with these, I was just out at a farmer's market hanging with some friends and it was, and we just found some beautiful flowers and I went home and took them into, into my yard and photographed them right there. And the next couple you'll, you'll see have a few raindrops because it was raining that day. This one, you've got a couple rain droplets throughout the piece. So all of these photos uh, can either be printed onto canvas, ready to hang, or onto metal, which gives it, gives it a really bright shine, very mo modern look. Uh, I love either, either, either of them. Both I print with high quality materials. It just, just depends what sort of style you go, you're going for, for in, in your space. Uh, as far as size, uh, you know, I can print them anywhere from eight to 10 uh, to, to 48 by 60. So, and you know, the bigger you pr print them, I'd say the bigger impact they have. And the cool part about how I edit my pieces is that if you print them really big, they won't they won't get pixelated. Um, they'll you know they're still very crisp. Every every line is really crisp up close. So back to the photos, we've got a couple cactuses. Uh, again, I like to take my camera wherever I go. Uh, so I'll do do traveling uh, you know, throughout the country. Uh, these next few are from Arizona. Uh, as I was. You know, hiking through some mountains uh, just outside of Phoenix. And again, got right up close to the top of this barrelhead ca cactus. And you see, you know, the cool part of my editing style, I intentionally, you know, have the edges blurred on the outside of the photos. Up next, some, uh, some beautiful aloe leaves. And what I'll do with a few of these is, you know, within, within a series, I will take a piece, then I'll often crop a section out. So these, t these two, this is the original image, and this next, this piece is a small section of the previous piece that I've, then, that I've then blown up. So you can see some of the detail and how it's, you know, really kind of falling apart into these abstract shapes. And then these next two, uh, the next pair are, I guess they call fire and ice, uh, go, go together as a kind of warm, cool com combination. This one was when I was uh, hiking out in, out in Black Rock Mountain State Park in Georgia, having a campfire. And as the fire was going, going down, I got my camera right up close to the fire. Uh, and these are the embers uh, as they're still hot, still burning, you know. Really, really vibrant, cool feeling here. And this next one, again, very, very abstract. Oh, it was actually a pile of snow that was outside my apartment a few years ago. And there was uh, on the side of the road, so there was some dirt that was kicked up into it. That's what the bl black area is. So I kind of made some areas darker, made some, some areas lighter. Uh, so it kind of looks like, like crystals. Uh, people often see, you know, different different images or different figures um, throughout this piece. Uh, so, you know, those are a few, few of my works. Again, um, the sizes, you can range from small to big. And, you know, the, pr the prices start um, from a $45 uh, small print to a $75 uh, 8x8 canvas all the way up to you know, roughly a, a $500 very large canvas. 
So, and, you know, even in, in these t times, you know, al although, you know, no one can get out much, uh, I can still have all, all my pieces uh, shipped directly to, to you. Uh, so uh, no need to, to worry about that. Do we have any, any other questions or comments, Colin? Yeah, your uh, work looks great. It shows very well on the screen here. Um, at this point, what are you anticipating is your next actual show that you'll be able to display your work at? To be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I have a few sh shows in September in uh, Chicago. So, I, um, you know, I live in the city in Chicago. I do a lot, lot of shows in the suburbs uh, as well as in the city. Uh, I'll often do a few shows in Milwaukee or Madison uh, or other parts of Wisconsin uh, as well as Indiana. Uh, so, you know, I'll travel a little bit th uh, throughout the year. Um, so, uh, you know, it depends on the year, but this year, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'd say no one really does. Uh, I can only hope, hope for the best uh, and hope, hope that as many people, um, you know, still, you know, want some art to brighten up their lives in these trying times. And hopefully these, uh, you know, these fun photographs I, t I take and my creativity can bring some people some joy and, and hope these days. Great. You know, uh, with those stimulus checks that are starting to go out now, uh, what a better way to uh, stimulate the economy than to support an art. So um, here's some choices right here that uh, uh, people can take advantage of uh, in the upcoming months. So I understand what you mean by a, a big question mark on all of the shows. Mm -hmm. Julie, what are you guessing is hopefully going to maybe kind of sort of perhaps be your next show? Any oh. idea? Well, currently the next one up is Garver Feed Mill on the 20th of June. So that's kind of up to you, Callan. We don't know if that's going forward or not. So, yeah. So that's with Artworks. It's uh, the one of the shows that I am putting together, and it's what I'm hoping will be our, my next show as well. Yeah. Uh, if that doesn't work, I do have something else up my sleeves that maybe we could do that weekend. That uh, would be um, still keeping in line with with everything that's taking place, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah. So at this point, we're trying to hold on to to the date. Uh, the group over at Garver has been great to work with. Um, so um, eventually we'll get an art show in there. Um, just not quite sure if it's going to happen on June 20th or not. Um, and Jane, when is your next show, do you think? You got to turn, you're, you're muted. You get yourself off. There you go. All right. Mine is also Garver Feed Mill. And the next weekend after that, another one with you. And I'm kind of worried about if it'll be too soon. But it would yeah. be nice to be able to have it. Yeah, we'll just have to see. So the weekend after that, June uh, June 27th, we're over in Odana Road, uh, across from uh, Market Square Shopping Center. Um, so it's a little bit smaller show there. So hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, so. I think my, my next big show coming up is... Um, after Garver that I know is on the schedule so far so good is at the end of July, I'll be out at the fire festival in Cambridge. Oh yeah. Always, yeah. Always a lot of fun. If people like to come out and if you like fire, it's definitely the place to be. They encourage people to do demos. Um, in the past few years, they've actually had blacksmiths out there and you can line up and wow. they let you actually wield the hammer and stuff. And there's a big iron pour that happens and fire dancers and, you know, unveilings of flaming pottery and all kinds of fun stuff. Cool. Cool. So Yeah. We've never, I've never seen that show. We've always had a conflict with that, but I've yeah. heard really good things about it. So that's great. Uh, Jane, do you want to go next or do you want me to? No, I'm fine with going next. Okay, go for it. Okay. Uh, I started making jewelry in the 80s, kind of by accident. When my parents were at Gulf Shores for a few months every winter, we would go. And my mom and I would find these cute little shells on the beach that had holes in the top. So I brought a whole bunch home and I made them into earrings. 
and everybody liked them and they bought them. So for a while I made earrings and then I drifted from jewelry to quilting uh, for quite a long time. And my first art show was at the West Side Business Club and it was just with quilted items. And then I decided uh, how many quilts can one person have? So I took classes, I did research, and I started making jewelry again. And that has become my passion. And like Julie, I have way more than I can wear. And I um, really miss having all the art shows this year so far. So today I'm going to turn my camera around and show you some of the things that I do have. First of all, I will just go over a little bit of what I had last week with the Howlite beads so you can see a better picture of them. I learned a lot from last week. So I'm gonna move the camera. There. So these are some of the beads. Is there any way that I can just be on the whole screen so I can see? It's not giving me the opportunity to do that on my screen for some reason. Okay. Press the view at the top right. It, I don't have that option. Usually it's okay. there. For some reason it's not there today. Well, here are some of the very colorful and lightweight and very affordable between $28 and $58 of necklaces that I made last week. And here are a couple more. And this one is really fun. And here's more purple. But what I wanted to show you today was something I did show last week. These are two necklaces made out of barrel beads. And barrel family includes prenite, citrine, amethyst, aquamarine. And these are listed on Etsy. Now this one, which is about 20 inches, has these absolutely adorable pink topaz faceted spacers in between the, the beads. And this one has peridot between all the beads as spacers. And these are 25% off for now from now until next Saturday. And then for Mother's Day, I have all these beautiful crystal quartz beads, necklaces, and April's birthstone is diamond, and these are an alternative in the crystal quartz, uh, the alternative or the contemporary bead for April, the birthstone. And they have these beautiful faceted rondelles in between. And this one, I think I got a lot of the bigger beads at Bernie's Rock Shop. And then you might say, well, diamonds are the real birthstone, but I do have diamonds right here. They're called Herkimer diamonds and they are mined in Herkimer, New York. They are double terminated, which means pointed at both ends. And um, they are really crystal clear. The ones from Afghanistan aren't quite as nice as this, but these are really beautiful. Crystal clear Herkimer diamonds. And to go with, I do have some earrings. These are some of the crystals that are in the other necklaces. And I have a few crystal necklaces. And then, because we don't know what's happening for Stenton Demai, which is the 5th of May, I believe, I do have some Viking jewelry. And this is just a little necklace with a Viking ship and a charm. And then this necklace has many charms with some hematite beads in between. And then I have this really long one with the Viking ship form and Odin and his crows and Thor's hammer and the axes. And there is a bracelet also with all the charms on it. 
and I have some earrings that go with, and another um, Viking ship with a charm, and then a, a little different um, Viking necklace. And these, the two like this are really long. And then, oh, and then there's one necklace with just Odin. And then I do some knotting of pearls. I, I buy my beads and then I use them to create what I think are really pretty pieces. So I have um, some knotted pearl necklaces. Here they are. And this one has these fun crystals, um, like Swarovski crystals through the middle of the necklaces. And this is on kind of a black brown leather, one and a half millimeter leather. This little guy up here is like a choker length. And most of the earrings or the necklaces have earrings to go with. The knotted again. And here is one that's again in that black brown with some big fat luscious pearls. And then here's one that's on kind of a bronze, the, the earrings you can see, and then a few different pearls. Again, some really pretty ones. And down here, I have have a pearl clasp at the back if you can't get them over your head. And here's one that is on silver or gray. And I think there are earrings to go with this one too. And then down here I have some really pretty wire wrapped pendants. And these are very reasonable. And they're agates, and then I'm not sure what the stone is, but it's a beautiful green. And then one more little crystal necklace right in here. So these would make good Mother's Day presents. I'm going to turn the camera back and so you can see me. So does anybody have any questions or comments? You, you can tell you've put a lot of work into preparing your jewelry. You said it went back uh, to the 80s that you you started doing yes. all? Yes. So you must be a teenager at that time. <laughs> You're right, Colin. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> good, good. Right. I haven't been doing shows that long. I've only been doing shows for maybe six years or seven. And I started with you, I believe. Oh, did you? Was that at Helldale? Um, I did it, well, one or two in Wausau before that, but when I started in the Madison area, uh, it, Hilldale was, I was with you, yes. Yeah, those were the days when we still had an indoor mall there, so, yeah, okay. Was that nice? Um, and did you give us kind of a price range of your various pieces? Well, the uh, Howlite, the very colorful ones, range from $28 um, to $58, and quite a few of them are $30. The, um, I'll, sh I'll switch the camera again. If I can, there. These are one, the short one with the um, pink topaz in it, is two hundred dollars, and the ones with the peridot is one seventy five, and they are twenty five percent off for the week. And these are all. This is sixty five. The little cute diamond one. 
And then the other ones are slightly over 100, and they are also, these two are 50 or 25% off. Um, this necklace is 42, the earrings are 18, and then I'm not sure what these are, but they're, they're pretty reasonably priced. The pearls are from like 98 to about 100, um, what's this one? 134, and the pearls are also 25 or 25% 25 off for the week. I'm trying to switch the camera back. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, any, if anybody has any questions, the um, the two barrel ones, the really light colored beads, are on my Etsy site. And uh, but don't if you if you don't if you live close to me don't buy them on Etsy. I will be happy to ship them to you, or we can do a porch pickup if that if you prefer that. But I will ship for free if you want any of these, um, even with the twenty five percent off. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Julie. Put up your contact information in the comments here so you can uh, find. Uh, Jane through her website and various ways of, of reaching her as well. So thank you for, for putting that together today, Jane. Thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, so now um, Michael's put together three pins that I'm going to show you here. One of them's brand new and a couple of them that have been out a little while here. So I'm going to switch my camera around so you can take a look at this. Oop. All right, so the first one here is brand new. It's uh, rather patriotic, and he's got a little saying on it here as well, a card that goes with it. It says, if you feel like uh, you're uh, losing, your, losing everything, remember that trees lose their leaves every year, and still they stand tall and wait for a better day to come. So... Uh, I thought uh, the red, white, and blue tree was appropriate for uh, some of the holidays that are coming up here, Memorial Day, 4th of July, uh, Labor Day, and Patriot's Day. Um, it's with the, the red, white, and blue tree, uh, and the little card comes with it as well. So those are um, $13 or three for 30. Then we have a popular heart that... Uh, We've had for a number of years, but it has a little saying that uh, has been added to the car card here. It says, start each day with a grateful heart. So these uh, red hearts have been very popular the last couple of years. Uh, and again, $13 or three for 30 on those. And then a special one that uh, Michael made just for um, all of the first responders, nurses, uh, doctors, firefighters, grocery store uh, personnel, delivery people, all of those that are really on the front lines right now and, and doing things uh, for us to keep keep us going through these challenging times. And the, the message here is our hearts are with you. Thank, for, thank you for all you do. So uh, again, the blue uh, in the heart there uh, that uh, he's put together. So any of these again are... Uh, $13 each or three for 30. And we have uh, free shipping on any of those items as well. Um, we have many, many other uh, pins that we've put together. Uh, so if there's something in particular that you're looking for, either in a tree or in a heart shape, uh, we have a lot of choices. So we can send you photographs of any of those. Uh, just reach out to us either on Facebook or through our website or uh, email me, call me, text message, you know, you know all the different ways to reach us these days. So uh, certainly there's there's many options there. So yeah, with that, um, does anyone else have any other comments or parting thoughts before we wrap up today? Just want to remind everybody if they're looking for one of the artists, um, it'll be in the side column. And if this video disappears, we also have a YouTube channel and I posted that information in the sidebar here. Where people can go back and rewatch these at a future time. And there's a link to all the artist information from all the shows. 
Great. Thank, thank you, you Julie. Julie. All right. With that, we want to thank, uh, thank everyone for joining us today. Thank our audience for uh, paying attention and, and watching this video. We appreciate that. Uh, again, we want to recognize our two sponsors, Dane by Local and Madison Essential Magazine, uh, for helping out. So uh, now that um, um, we're going to be getting back to business here one of these days, uh, we certainly want to support all of our local businesses and, and uh, uh, keep, keep the local economy moving forward. And a great way of doing that is with the artists that you've seen today. So make sure that you I, try to um, I have one thing, Colin, that may I have is a minute? Sure. Uh, all of the Howl Light necklaces that I briefly showed you at the beginning are on a live video on my Facebook account, uh, my business account there at Brass Egg Studio. Great. Yeah, you put that together last week, I think, didn't you? I saw that. I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you for doing that. All right. We want to thank everyone for joining us today and have a great day. Thanks for joining us.